Hello everyone, Hyper here, and today's video will be the Unholy DK Mythic Plus Guide. If you're trying to finish your Keystone Masters achievement, which this upcoming week is really good to do since it will be Volcanic and Bursting, um, along with Fortified, it's a great time to get this mount for the season, or if you're just looking into pushing some keys or doing some weekly Mythic Plus, um, this video should help you out with that. In this video, I'm going to try and cover everything you need to know from covenants, talents, rotation, little tips and tricks that you might find useful, and so on, to get you through Mythic Plus as an Unholy DK. Before we jump into the content, here's a quick word from this video's sponsor. If you find games with tons of collectibles and customization fun, you will definitely enjoy Array Shadow Legends. There are hundreds of champions you can collect by summoning them, earning them from quests or login rewards, or by participating in special events, such as the Valentine's Day event that's going on right now. Each champion will bring unique skills to the table that you can put to good use either in PvE or PvP content, or for some of them both. One of my favorite legendaries so far has been Arbiter, who is a Void Legendary support champion. She's really useful, she is still one of the best arena leads that you can have for any type of higher end uh, PvP comp. She's very useful in dungeons because she does bring a buff that buffs your entire group. She does heal if your group is at low health, and if there are people dead on your team, she can even revive them. So overall, super useful legendary champion, and the fact that she's accessible to pretty much everyone makes her that much better. In the latest major build of Raid, they added the Doom Tower, which is probably one of the biggest changes they've had recently. The Doom Tower has a total of 120 floors, with you being able to climb 10 floors each day. Also, depending on how progressive you are in the game, you can either tackle it on normal or hard difficulty. Also, this month there are tons of events going on, including the Valentine's Day event that brought a bunch of new champions to the game, including a legendary one that you can fuse if you participate in the different tournaments and events that are going on. If you decide to download Raid on your PC or mobile device, make sure to use the link in the description box, because if you do, you will get a bunch of cool rewards to get you started with the game, including a free rare champion, Executioner. After you install the game, make sure to check your inbox, because that's where your rewards will be for the next 30 days. The first thing I want to cover is your Covenant choice. If you look at the Raider IO leaderboard, you might be a little bit confused because there is a pretty big divide between Necrolord and Venthyr DKs on there. Um, at what's causing this? So pretty much, if you're a Raider, you're going to go Necrolord since for Raid fights, it is significantly better. Whereas if you're a purely Mythic Plus player, then Venthyr will be better. But if you're somewhere in the middle, you do Mythic Raiding, and you like doing uh, Mythic Plus, then those players tend to gravitate more towards Necrolord, since it is better in Raiding, and it's about on par for Mythic Plus with the Venthyr option. If you are playing Necrolord, your default Soulbind will be a many. A many gives you a pretty nice uh, strength boost every time you use Abomination Limb, and it also gives you access to two potency conduits. The first one, you should always take Eternal Hunger, and for the second one, um, I usually run Convocation of the Dead because on a Tyrannical or, you know, single target boss fights, it does cause your Unholy Blight, Dark Transformation, and Apocalypse to line up, whereas if you didn't have that, then your Apocalypse would always be desynced from Unholy Blight and Dark Transformation. However, on AoE parts of the dungeon, so on Trash Bulls, it does lose out on value since Apocalypse is not all that useful. So for fortified keys or dungeons where you do tons of big AoE pulls, there is another soulbind option that I will talk about in the tips and tricks section, since it does require a little bit of uh, finessing with cancel aura macros and so on. However, if you're simply just trying to get a little bit more AoE damage out of your soulbind, you can simply change out your trait from Gristle Toes down to Gnashing Chompers, which will give you a little bit of haste. Um, on certain trash pools, there are mobs with very low health that die early on, um, so that helps you out. However, on other trash pools where most mobs have about equal amount of health, it tends to be a little bit suboptimal to only start getting haste towards the end of the pool when you typically want to be conserving your cooldowns um, for the next one. On the other hand, if you're playing Vent here, your default option should be Nadia, uh, which will look something similar to this, where you take Thrill Seeker, again, an Eternal Hunger, and then you just go straight down the middle all the way to exacting preparations. 
Another option is Theotar. However, to make use of his kit, you will need to use a lot of combat potions because his main perk is that combat potions last 200% longer or 100 to 200% longer. So if you never use a combat potion throughout the Mythic Plus, this last trait is essentially useless. Um, so you can go for an extra potency. However, if you tend to use a combat pot on cooldown, then Theotar can also be a pretty good option. Next, let's talk about your build. Talents, trinkets, and legendaries mainly. So for your talents, you want to run this as your default, where you take Infected Claws on Holy Blight, Grip of the Dead, Soul Reaper, Wraith Walk on Holy Pact, and Army of the Damned. While technically Pestilent Postules can be used, I found that overall Soul Reaper tends to be a little bit more useful. For example, each time you proc a Prideful, Soul Reaper will help you in that sub 35% execute range. And it's also pretty beneficial on bosses, especially when you go a pretty AoE heavy build, you tend to lose out a little bit of boss damage and Soul Reaper kind of makes up for that. The other optional talents that you can switch around is obviously the level 30 row, where you can take Asphyxiate if your party just doesn't have any single target stuns, and also your tank is not permanently kiting out of your DND. Um, but other than that, Spell Eater can be useful against certain affixes, and in the first row on pure single target against like high tyrannical bosses, you can take All Will Serve, but in general, Infected Claws seems like the better play. Now talking about your Legendary and your Trinkets. For your Legendary, Frenzied Monstrosity will be the default. You want to run it in pretty much every dungeon. Um, on Lokis, um, in that 10 to 15 range, even on Tyrannical, you're much better off running Frenzied Monstrosity. It isn't until much higher key levels where you should even start considering Deadliest Coil for Tyrannical bosses, um, but on Fortified Weeks, you're pretty much locked into using Frenzied Monstrosity in every dungeon. For Trinkets, luckily we have a couple of really good options. IQD, while it can be a little bit suboptimal in Raid, where sometimes you end up healing players or giving your healers mana, in Mythic Plus, your whole party usually resets fairly well from pool to pool. This means that you're going to go into a new pool with everyone at full health and your healer at a decent level of mana. So that means every time you pop this in the opener on a new pool, you should get secondary stats off of it. Other great unused trinkets include the crit crystal from the other side and the badge from PvP. Now for your second trinket, it seems to be pretty universally accepted that the insignia that comes from PvP, which offers you a strength proc, tends to be the best option to go with. Next, let's take a look at how we actually AoE as an unholy DK, because in BFA everything was centered around wounds. You had to build up wounds, set up wounds to do a proper AoE burst. Now it's less about wounds and more about runic power, epidemic, and then during your death and decay just spamming scare strike regardless of if your targets have wounds on them or not. Um, so that's kind of changed a lot and I, the, one of the biggest mistakes I see is that unholy DKs are a little bit too worried about wounds but since we're not running that bursting source talent anymore, wounds contribute a lot less to our damage than some of our other abilities. So generally you should not be too worried about wounds. Instead, what you should be worried about is spending all of your resources. So this means that when you run into a pack, you want to press your Unholy Blight and Dark Transformation, um, which procs your Frenzied Monstrosity Legendary as well. And then after that, you want to spend your runes, then your runic power, then your runes again, then your runic power. Um, so the way this is going to look is you run into a pack, Unholy Blight, Dark Transformation, uh, spam out a few Scourge Strikes just to dump all of those runes, after that, you can Epidemic a few times, then you Death and Decay and spam Scourge Strikes. Now, when you get close to capping Runic Power, you will weave in a few Epidemics to spend uh, the Runic Power just so you're not over capping. But generally, you just want to be pressing Scourge Strike, Scourge Strike, Scourge Strike during your Death and Decay. Now, once the Death and Decay is over, then you can go back to using up all of your Runic Power with Epidemics um, and kind of going back into a single target rotation. It's also worth noting that Apocalypse is for most purposes kind of a dead cooldown on AoE. You pretty much just use it to generate more runes that you can generate more runic power with so you can epidemic more. Um, so in your opener, in the burst section of your opener, you do not use Apocalypse. 
Typically, you only end up using it after all of your cooldowns are over. Um, or if you're on a single target fight, then of course you use it. Let's take a look at what this looks like on the target dummies. It is worth noting that since I am Necrolord, I will be using Abomination's Limb before my Defend Decay. However, if you're Vent here and you have Swarming Mist, then you want to use that in the initial phase when you spend your runes. So you're going to pop your cooldown, spend your runes, but after that you want to press Swarming Mist, which will then give you a pretty long duration where you can just be spamming Epidemic. And once your Swarming Mist is over and you're out of Runic Power, then you can drop your Death and Decay and go into this uh, Scourge Strike spam. With Necrolord, that Scourge Strike spam happens a lot sooner. So I run in, I typically do one Fester Strike just to dump some runes, then on Holy Blight, Dark Transformation, I Fester Strike a secondary target, then I'm going to use two Epidemics, use my A-Bomb Limb, drop my Death and Decay along with my Trinket, and then just spam Scourge Strikes. Once I get close to full Runic Power, I weave in a single Epidemic just so I don't overcap, but then I just want to spam Scourge Strikes until my Death and Decay is over. Once my Death and Decay is over, then I just use up all my Runic Power, build up wounds on a single target, and I usually pop it with Apocalypse. But from here, you just pretty much want to build up Runic Power and Epidemic as much as you can. Um, then once there's only like one target left, then you move into a purely single target um, rotation. That's pretty much how you do a burst on an AoE pack in Mythic+. Plus. Generally, I suggest only using one Unholy Blight and one Dark Transformation per pack. Um, you know, if all the mobs are at 10% health and your Unholy Blight is coming off cooldown, do not press it again. You're better off waiting until the next pack, um, just because you end up wasting a pretty big chunk of it um, if you press it at that point. All right, next, moving into the tips and tricks section of the guide. With the Army of the Damned talent, your Army of the Dead should see a lot more use throughout the dungeon. Generally, your Army of the Dead will end up being anywhere between a 4 minute to a 5 minute cooldown. This means that instead of just holding it for each boss fight, you should be using it a little bit more freely. Uh, for example, anytime you bloodlust a pool on Fortified, you should also Army of the Dead with it. Army can also be used on uh, Prideful mobs if there's no boss coming up. So if you have a Prideful, then a big trash pack, then like a smaller trash pack, then a boss, then you're pretty safe to use Army of the Dead on the Prideful mob, which will deal a ton of damage. So instead of just holding it very conservatively for each boss, use it a little bit more liberally uh, where ever you need single target damage really, even in packs that tend to have a single mob that's very important to kill, you can use Army of Dead, the Dead to help you out with that damage. Then we have Anti-Magic Zone, which no surprise to anyone has become a pretty iconic ability for Unholy DKs um, or DKs in general in Shadowlands. Anti-Magic Zone should be used every single time you have a Prideful. It is only on a two minute cooldown, and especially if you use the Soulbind Conduit that increases its duration and size, you can drop it when the Prideful is at about 35% health, 30% health, and it will last you until Prideful dies, um, and it will mitigate a ton of damage. Other than that, any uh, trash pools that have caster mobs in them that are impossible to kick, for example, Inspires of Ascension, um, there are a bunch of mobs that tend to cast those dark lashes and so on, you can just drop AMZ to help your group out. Also very useful for boss fights, but the main purpose for Mythic Plus, you should drop it every single Prideful, there's no reason not to. A very big misplay I see from a lot of Unholy DKs is Unholy Blight usage on Prideful. Uh, so you go into a Prideful, but you know that after Prideful you're either going to do a boss or a large trash pool. So everyone's like, okay, I need to conserve my cooldowns, so then I have it up for that buff um, whenever we do the boss or that big trash pool. But if you're doing a dungeon that's probably plus 15 or higher, um, at the plus 15 mark, I use Unholy Blight on Prideful, but I don't use Dark Transformation. Um, if the keystone is higher, then you can use both Unholy Blight and Dark Transformation and still have it up for the following pull. The only caveat to this is be careful if you have like a fire mage uh, in the group, for example, who tends to combust every single prideful, then you probably don't want to use Unholy Blight. Also, if you're doing lower keys in the plus 10 to plus 14 range, 
uh, it is generally not worth using Unholy Blight on Prideful because it just won't be back up fast enough for that following pull. Lastly, a few tips regarding DK utility. AMS can be super useful when doing bursting keys. Um, if you use anti-magic shell before mobs die, that bursting debuff will not actually get applied to you. So even if you kill 10 mobs and you would normally go up to 10 stacks, anti-magic shell will absolutely save you. And on bursting weeks, you should always run the spell eater talent. On storming weeks, um, all melee hit storming, but death's advance can be used to avoid the knockup of storming. You will still take the damage, but at least you won't get knocked into the air, um, so there's that. Lastly, on spiteful weeks, asphyxiate can be an absolute lifesaver. Um, whenever you kill mobs and the spitefuls spawn from them, they will typically go down a list and fixate targets. Um, so if you kill a pack of five mobs, odds are only one of those spitefuls are going to actually fixate you. So just wait until Spiteful spawns, see which one fixates you, and then just stun it. Um, and that's pretty much the only thing I use Asphyxiate on on Spiteful Weeks. It is a little bit selfish, but it's better than running out of melee range and having to wait until the Spiteful dies. The last cheesy thing you can do as a Necrolord, um, on Fortified Weeks, if you're playing uh, Bonesmith Hymir, this last Soulbind trait Morrow Gemstone can actually be manipulated to proc when you want. So every time you crit, you will gain a stack. When you reach 10 stacks, you get 18% crit for 10 seconds, and this can only proc once every minute. However, you can cancel the stacks that are building before they get to 10 if you just don't want to proc it. For example, if you're at the end of a trash pull um, and you're kind of building up, but you don't want to proc your crit because there's only two mobs alive and the upcoming pool has 10 mobs in it with all of your cooldowns, then you can just cancel aura those stacks. I have the macro linked in the description box um, to actually control when you want this to proc. And this means that essentially every time you have Unholy Blight, Dark Transformation, and your Unused Trinket um, works especially well with Badge since they're both one minute cooldown, you can have 18% crit every time you do an AoE pull with your cooldowns. So it's very fun to play with, but at the same time, kind of annoying because you constantly need to keep an eye on what's the internal cooldown of this and how many stacks you're at. Do you want to cancel them or do you want to proc them? So that's kind of the last thing that I wanted to mention. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to you and answer any concerns or questions you might have. If you want to support my channel, you can also check out my Patreon and all of the perks that it entails. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.